Honorable Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singha, Honorable Minister of Finance Mr. Mangala Samaravira, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, Governor of the Central Bank, Sri Suresh Prabhu, former Minister of Commerce of India, Dr. Ganeshan Vignaraja, Executive Director of the Lakshman Kadirigama Institute, <coughs> Board and Committee of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, past chairs, and uh, I want to recognize Honorable Minister Malik Samarikram, who has honored us with his presence as well. Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Ministers, it's indeed an honor and privilege to welcome you here this morning, and also on behalf of the Chamber and the private sector at large, we acknowledge that uh, amongst your busy uh, schedule, you have been able to spend this morning with us. Thank you very much, sir. Recalibration the economy and building a way forward for the period 2020 to 2025. Recalibration Sri Lanka's economic trajectory is, in fact, simply taking stock of our strengths, recognizing the challenges before us, and also doing so on a granular understanding of the macroeconomic and global dynamics. Earlier this morning, we spent one and a half hours in a very rich discussion on the global dynamics, including the transformation in technologies, in geopolitics, and the interplay between the world's various global forces that will shape the backdrop for Sri Lanka's trajectory over the next few years. We also need to recognize when we talk about recalibration, the fact that we live in exponential times, that global dynamics move at a very fast pace, and that in fact, a recalibration would need to be done on a very regular basis. That planning will never be static, will need to be recalibrated, revisited, on the backdrop of the changes around us. Recalibration also needs to be multidimensional. And today we recognize that in Sri Lanka, we have the challenge of being at a very important juncture in our future in terms of social, political, as well as economic future. The economic growth of our country has to be addressed in the context of social and political backdrops. Today we recognize that over the last 365 days, we have faced several uncertainties, both in terms of political stability, as well as in terms of the terrorist attacks we faced in the middle of this year, and the social disharmony which emerged over the latter, uh, or the, in the transient following the April 21st incidents. But what is important to recognize is that these are transients. These are also nothing unique to our nation. If you look at the world landscape today, even the most mature of democracies are going through similar issues. It is therefore imperative that we accept these transients as transients, that we revisit our strengths, and that we are determined as a resilient nation, as a resilient group of private enterprise, in close collaboration with the government, to overcome as well as go beyond. So it was our belief as a business chamber in particular and a private sector at large that our duty at this point in time is to strengthen the arm of the state, to strengthen the arm of government, to take on whatever transient challenges that may prevail and to help this economy forward. In this context, I think 
our first obligation as a private sector is to be positive. And I think we need to cancel from our vocabulary the sentiment of despondency. I think there's no room for attitudes of negativity, attitudes of complaining, and as a private sector, we should simply be positive and look forward to the future the same way we do with our individual businesses. Second, we believe that the power of collectivism should come to the fore, that it's not the private sector and the government or the private sector versus the government, that it is private sector with the government and that it's the mobilization of this nexus that will enable the cycle of growth to pick up, pick up momentum and move forward at speed. Third but not last, a close alignment to pluralism and inclusion. We sit here in the Western province. We might consider the adjacent provinces, but I think it's very important to start thinking about the provincial GDP of our country both on a per capita basis as well as on an absolute GDP. It is imperative that we work as a combined private sector and government nexus to take development, take private sector investment to every corner of this country. In this respect, the Chamber of Commerce is a plural and collaborative organization. It has no less than 631 members, 35 approved associations, six national agenda committees, and eight sector steering committees. And it is the strength of this plurality which I believe has led to the sustainability of the chamber for over 180 years. But we need to shift gear on inclusion, and with our provincial chambers, we can promise the government that we will work together on a program of inclusive and regionalized investment. A collective aspiration, therefore, and an action plan for economic acceleration. Our vision at the Chamber is that we could, from the beginnings of an 89 billion US dollar economy, reach 134 billion economy in the space of five years. And this vision has been articulated in a action plan and framework which has been brought together by a large number of professionals from within the chamber and from the larger private sector. Over 50, in fact, of leading private sector and even public sector professionals who have come together to frame this set of proposals. 18 committees and assisted by three of the leading management consulting firms, KPMG, EY, and PwC, to whom I extend my sincere gratitude. And chair, the project chaired by Mr. Aso Kapiri is a board member and closely assisted by the chief economist of the chamber, Mr. Shiran Fernando. So this collective effort <clears throat> reaches out to establish an 8% growth rate by the year 2025. Modest steps, beginning with 3.5% today and going up to 5% at the end of next year and so on till we reach an 8% real GDP growth in the next five years. That would translate to 134 billion GDP economy and a compounded annual average growth rate of 6.8%. Now in going there, the first dimension of positivity or positivism that we need to apply is to consolidate and pivot on our fundamental strengths. Today, we have already demonstrated over the past two years the ability to establish a strong fiscal discipline. And we congratulate the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the Finance Ministry of Sri Lanka, for making this quantum shift in terms of fiscal discipline over the past years. We have also seen a much higher degree of macro stability with an increase in the balance of payments and reserves, or especially in the year 2018 and 19. We also rise on the strength of a per capita GDP, which is the second highest in the region, and a global competitiveness index, which is also second ranked in the region. So hence the call not to be despondent. We 
start from a position of strength. We start from a position of very significant improvement and shifting of our fundamentals over the past few years. We also have very robust global market access, in fact, to a population of over three and a half billion people in some of the major markets in this world, including India, Europe, and the United States. We have a very strong strategic location, as we all know, and the international relations which have been established over the past years reinforce our global positioning and strengthening, strengthen it with respect to the trade and geopolitical context within the global framework. We also have several global flagship industries and infrastructures. Our ports and logistics sector promises to be one of the best in the world and certainly in the region. Add to that our strategic exports and Ceylon or Sri Lanka brands. Our human development index is ranked first in the South Asian region and similarly for our quality of life index as published by Mercer two years ago. Importantly, the freedoms which have been established and ingrained and brought to be an expectation of the entire community and society in Sri Lanka. Last but not least, the fact that as a private sector and as a nation, we are resilient. So that brings together a matrix of strengths. And based on this matrix of strengths, we also need to recognize where we need to go and where we need to improve. And this is the fundamental framework within which the Chamber's action plan has been built. First, that we need to be determined to accelerate our escape. We will escape, but we need to accelerate our escape from the middle income trap, where increase of exports to match and surpass our imports, to generate sufficient surplus in order to, to fund our infrastructure, relying less on debt, to keep our output well ahead of consumption. And how do we do this? Through productivity improvements, innovation, and among others, export diversification. So this we believe as a primary objective, a primary uh, aspiration of getting out of the three to 5% growth range, which is typical of the middle income trap. Today, Sri Lanka is the third lowest in terms of GDP growth in the region. But if we ride on the strengths that we discussed and aspire to move out of the middle income trap as soon as possible, we believe that we can reach the aspired to growth rate as well as the aspired to grow the GDP by the year 2025. In terms of uh, the build-up, the sector committees of the chamber have taken a very balanced as well as sectoral view and examined the potential of our sectors and the growth that each sector could deliver in quantified terms. Likewise, we recognize in this document, in this framework, that the equation is clearly a nexus of public and private sector contributions. Very simply put, we seek from government policy reform and growth enablers. And that is the most valuable input and trigger for growth that we believe the government can place on the table. Policy reform plus the speed with which policy is reformed and actuated. From the private sector, a greater sense of risk taking, putting our front foot forward and investing in the future of this country on an inclusive basis. So increased investment and risk participation of the private sector on the backdrop of government policy reform. This will deliver in simple terms, economic growth, increase government revenues, and therefore enable the government to invest more in social and public infrastructure, thereby extending our human development index, ensuring a happier nation, a healthier nation, and an educated nation. Our framework includes 140 policy interventions, or proposes 140 policy interventions, over 30 sectors and subsectors 
in terms of representation and granularity of these proposals. And we also highlight some of the mega projects initiated over the past few years or the past decade. The Port City, a solution to energy through expedited or accelerated energy generation projects, the airport expansion, the Hamantata port, and so on. Key mega projects which will deliver value if completed in a shorter space of time than long. We sincerely believe that this would result in a 6.8% GDP compounded average growth rate and elevation of our HDI. This matrix is a structure that is followed in the framework. We have the principal sectors as our verticals, agriculture, retail, tourism, manufacturing, exports, and so on. And importantly, we have also highlighted the need to work on several horizontals or cross-cutting themes such as digitization, education, skills development, energy, SME development, and so on. This matrix is the foundational block. It's, this is not exhaustive in terms of rows and columns, but in order to maintain brevity, I have kept it to a summary of the matrix. And well supported by a progressive policy landscape, and here we would <clears throat> have proposals on trade, taxation, regulatory innovation to meet global as well as inclusion demands, fiscal and monetary policies for the future, inclusion, sustainability. And <clears throat> importantly, three other levers. The first from your uh, left, transformation, and in particular the transformation of the public sector, state-owned enterprises, private-public partnerships, the transformation of labor and the structure of our workforce to meet the future of an industrial revolution 4.0 based technology landscape. Governance in terms of establishing a strong meritocracy in terms of public sector appointments and meritocracy which needs to be mapped and matched by the private sector. Execution management and accountability for delivery transparency, ideally through digital means, and addressing of corruption. And here too, I think the private sector plays an equal, if not more important role, in working with the government to establish an environment of zero corruption. Last but not least, national integrity in the form of national security, ethnic harmony, law and order, freedoms that we have already established, and tolerance. So this framework is one which, in simple terms, brings together the proposals that the Chamber has included in its, frame, in its uh, acceleration plan. Ladies and gentlemen, and Honorable Minister and Prime Minister, we believe that <clears throat> transformation opportunities in policy have always been abundant and foundational. It's about making it happen, and in particular, there are several transformational opportunities which would require political consensus and non-partisan commitment. I think as a nation, as a private sector, as a government, we all agree that most of these transformational levers have to be done and that the plan to execute should go beyond political differences and party separations. We believe that <clears throat> tough Reforms such as SOE re-engineering, digitization of the public administration, as well as the private to public interaction, and therefore workforce and labor reform matched with targeted and inclusive welfare to really restructure our labor force to meet the maximum potential of the future ahead. National integrity, as I mentioned, is a fundamental imperative, and I would highlight here execution monitoring. Time is short, and we are in exponential times. The world is changing. Our competitors in this region are also moving ahead very fast. And therefore, I think the speed at which we change, the speed at which we execute without procrastinating on any aspect of the future plan will be crucial. And this 
is not something we should just place on the shoulders of government. Private sector, the chamber, the collective of the entire uh, private enterprise in Sri Lanka is equally responsible and accountable to make this happen. So in terms of a future positioning, we believe that through successful recalibration, what would have been a $113 billion economy in 2025 can indeed be a $134 billion economy. That the key indices, for example, of per capita GDP, exports as a percentage of imports, FDI as a percentage of GDP, etc., and going all the way down to the ease of doing business rank regionally to move from the third to the first place and globally from 100 to 40, and the global competitiveness index from 85 to 50 and regional rank from second to first. I think these are exciting and doable in terms of uh, achievement over the next five years if government and private sector works closely together. However, if we go at our current speed and just follow the status quo in terms of a path, I believe that we will not reach these aspired to metrics but end up where we are with the third column. And that is being fairly conservative with respect to the movement of our regional peers who are today demonstrating growth rates well in excess of what Sri Lanka is delivering. So in conclusion, I thank you uh, for your uh, patient listening of this introduction to the framework. I would like to once again thank everyone who was a part of building this framework, both from the private sector and the public sector. The framework will be published on the Chamber website for download and for feedback. It's a working document today, and we look forward to criticism, we look forward to input, and we look forward to collective encouragement to make this happen. Uh, thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, for honoring us this morning. Uh, and on behalf of the Chamber, let me wish you all a very productive and exciting conference.